Um, and of course, then you can guess the true ranking that this user would give by adding back these two quantities uh, to this. But this is of no, it's, it's inconsequential when it comes to recommenda recommendation. You don't care to predict the, the ranking, just to look at similar rankings. Okay, any questions about this? Uh, yes? You put the bar on top of both of the vectors. Does that mean you have to do that under a different process? Uh, so the bar just means uh, that you are debiasing first. Oh, okay. It's not like you're trying no. to be counted as a... No, no. You simply remove the bias. So you remove the biases. You look for similar and dissimilar movies and you use those with strong correlation and strong negative correlation to make a weighted sum of ranks to, um, to, um, to recommend. So please, okay, if you go anywhere to work uh, that does uh, online business, that's what you are going to encounter. So it's very well worth understanding this. And look, it's just a quadratic function of minimization. So it's, uh, it's just really basic algebra. But it does incredibly, uh, it has incredibly good results. OK, and it was one of the components of the Netflix challenge uh, winning algorithm. Now, Notice uh, that here we didn't take time into account. So, for example, if I liked a movie and saw it a couple of days ago, and I liked the movie but saw it four years ago, the significance of me liking that movie or disliking that movie should kind of be prorated. So, and in fact, this is what the winning algorithm also is. And, but the, the method how you do that uh, uh, remains almost the same, except that uh, instead of having a single bias to the user, you split the entire history on, say, uh, uh, one year, uh, so past year, and then past uh, five years, right? And maybe past 10 years. Uh, and instead of a single bias, you will have three biases depending on the time, uh, right? But you still solve the same least squares, except that now you have uh, three times as many uh, variables. Uh, but apparently, in the Netflix challenge, uh, adding uh, uh, this uh, time dependency uh, improved the predictive uh, ability of, uh, of the recommender system. OK, any questions about this? This is not trivial, but it is simple. And don't, I mean, uh, don't be mad at first. This is really, really very basic stuff. Uh, please uh, read it in the textbook. It is uh, beautifully explained. And this is what makes millions for Amazon uh, and for all other online, uh, re, uh, you know, uh, retail stuff. So um, that's first type of recommender uh, systems. There is another uh, important kind which uh, that it does not rely on this notion of the angle between uh, users or movies. So this angle is, a, in a sense, distance between uh, vectors, right? The quote unquote distance. Um, so another method, 
so the winning, so in this Netflix challenge, uh, very quickly, within months, uh, um, people were able to beat the Netflix recommender system. But then uh, the improvements became minuscule. So, and eventually, amazingly enough, uh, so how do you evaluate a recommender system? You simply take this matrix that I erased and you remove some of the values. And then you use this method to guess the values that you removed. And you see what is the Euclidean distance between true values, right? So in the matrix that you had, um, let me show you. How do we evaluate the recommender systems and how did the Netflix choose the winning algorithm? So in this matrix uh, that is only partially filled, but right, you have entries only at relatively few places compared to the dimension of the table. So what Netflix did was the following. Yeah. They simply hid a small number of ratings, right? And then ask the algorithm to predict the missing values. Then they found the distance, Euclidean distance between row i, j uh, minus predicted row i, j squared over missing uh, i, j. So, right? So this is the Euclidean distance between what the algorithm guess should stand here, here, and here. Right? And what the really real values obtained from the users were. And the how close you got uh, gives you the quality of your prediction um, algorithm. Uh, so uh, the winning algorithm, which is something that happens in practice a lot, was a mishmash of actually it was weighted sum of hundreds, literally hundreds of algorithms. Uh, you know, uh, I told you this already, for example, cameras, uh, they can detect faces. Uh, how do they detect faces? Well, they combine literally thousands of uh, detection <laughs> methods. This is called boosting, right? For example, they might look uh, uh, at the regions that are roughly symmetric along one axis, uh, and uh, kind of very kind of crude features. Uh, but then they compose uh, in a weighted average huge number of these crude uh, methods and provide really amazingly accurate uh, algorithm. I'm always amazed how my little Canon uh, how efficiently it can detect uh, a large number of faces in a, in a shot, right? Uh, so the same applies for to recommender systems. The winning recommender system, uh, well, first, it wasn't very practically useful. It won the competition, but it was so complicated because it actually was doing exactly this boosting type uh, trick, uh, namely, uh, are we, uh, are we finished? We're over time. Oh, we are over time. I'm sorry. Okay, next time we will see another. So what I want to say, uh, we will combine several methods. Sorry, I forgot that we are on a, starting on a half hour. Uh, I'll see you then uh, on Thursday. Yes. Uh, actual value here. So just take that.